better to hear your voice. I think. Uh, uh, this morning, let me take uh, this time also to welcome our pastor, Pastor uh, Mane, uh, Dr. Clifford Mane. I will just uh, say, Dr. Mane, today I decided to look like you, to, to you have been an African man you know, this whole week. And we praise God for who he has made us to be. And uh, we are so thankful that yes, he has made us to be who we are. Let me just read the last part of your CV, which uh, has been taking us through graciously throughout the week. It says, you are always conscious of God's grace and goodness towards you in lifting you from the gutter of your life and setting you on a road to glory. You are committed to God's service and believes in giving your best to your Redeemer. And actually we have seen that this week that you are giving your best to your Redeemer. Welcome Dr. Clifford Money in this last section of your presentations to us. And may we take this time to welcome you. This is your time, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you to all of my brothers and sisters in South Africa and all over the world, wherever you are watching us from. Uh, we have just been delighted. I've been delighted to spend this week with you guys. Um, I thought seven days were long enough, but it went by so fast. But glad to be here. Thank you so much uh, for this evening as we conclude. Let me, um, tonight, our subject is simple. Of course, our theme for the entire week has been made for more made for more and under the, the general theme made for more, we have been giving you sub topic every night. Sub topic we've been giving every night as we went along. Uh, we started with the intention of creation and therein we were able to see that while God created us, God really created us so that we can be like ambassador to him in this world. He, he wanted us to be his confidant to be his to be his ambassador, to be God on earth. We went through that. Then we talk about the fact that in the larger scheme of things, God, we were included in his heritage, all of the heritage. And that's why I'm so excited because the God included us in his heritage, meaning that he giving us everything uh, that is good and is pertaining to life and godliness. He giving it to us. And then we talk about the fact that in order for us to actually receive stuff in our lives, that we can create it with our thoughts and our words. And if you cannot see it, you will not possess it. And our topic was uh, perception, uh, perceive to possess. And we say the true act of prayer is for you to actually see what you want, know it, clearly define it and claim it because God has given us everything pertaining to love, I mean to life and godliness. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessing according to Ephesians 1, 3. We saw that. So we're not coming to God. Every time we come to God, we're not begging. He, it is his pleasure to see us come to him. Uh, that's the God that we serve. So, so uh, we talk about that. Then we talk about the fact that um, when God created, we all, everything that God made us to be, the enemy can turn it upside down. When we submitted ourselves to him, he placed us in this cage and we developed the cage mentality and our focus became very skewed. We, we were totally out of focus and we started perceiving ourselves, seeing ourselves less than who we were made to be. And because of the perception we have of ourselves, the belief that we have of ourselves, because of that, everything that we create in our lives were consistent with our belief. We, we did not focus on the right thing. And so we supposed to be functioning from the effect of stuff to the cause, but rather we started functioning from the cause to the effect. And when you start from the cause to the effect, we saw that it's a problem because your focus is more on the insurmountable problem that you have rather than the end result that is better. So God had created us. He said, all you have to do, your part, your part as a man, my children, your part is to put your eyes 
on the end. It's to perceive, it's to put your eyes on the end, it's to see what it is that you want, the end result, and leave the cost to God. God is the one who's going to make that to happen. In other words, you need to just take what God, what you want, because God had given it all to you. Just say, Lord, that one there is the one I want. And how you get it is not your problem. It's God's problem to make you get it. Amen. And so uh, our topic for that was out of focus. Then we had glued together by uh, uh, glued together by gratitude. And in that, we found out that the most powerful elevator emotions uh, of humanity is gratitude, joy and gratitude. Joy and gratitude will bring whatever it is that you desire into your orbit, into your life. You have to see it. And when you claim it, you, you accept that you already receive it. You see, uh, uh, that's the way we were made, but the enemy made us to wait to get it before we express our gratitude. And I told you this week, that's not where God, that's not how God made the universe. That's why some of our prayers are not being answered. You just try to give gratitude for what it is that you want, whether it's a house, whether it's a husband, whether it's a, a, a healing, whatever it is, you need to start celebrating it as if you already have it. We, we dealt with that on day five, uh, uh, on day five. Then last night we talked about an old story a uh, new perspective. We talk about the prodigal son, and we talk about the fact that God doesn't keep any malice against us. All of the, all of the malices that, or or or, or the, the 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 evil deeds that we have done, all the record. God doesn't keep any record of any of our evil deeds. The record where that record is kept is in your mind, in my mind, in our mind, and because we are the record keeper of. Our own evil deeds, it stops us from approaching God the way we're supposed to approach him. And that is the reason why we always go to God that we are begging. But the Lord ears are open, attentive to us. As soon as we just open our mouth at the prodigal son to say, Father, I'm sorry. He is there to embrace you. He is there to hug you back into the scheme of things. And we saw that. So tonight, forget. Forget the former, forget the former. Father in heaven, thank you for your love, being with us all through this week, uh, a night for us here, morning for them in South Africa, maybe afternoon or evening, wherever the time may be, for the others who are watching us from wherever they are, we just want to thank you for the privilege uh, that you have opened for us. The devil thought that he get God's people when he brought coronavirus, not knowing by so doing, he actually burst the door open where we can fellowship with one another uh, beyond the walls of our churches. We thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege. Bless us again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. It's nice to be back here again tonight. Uh, forget the former. Everything that we have talked about, Perhaps for some of you, you did not even know, for some of you, you did not know some of the information that we have been giving this week uh, uh, by way of the Holy Spirit that have been coming to us this week. Some of you may not, it may have been new for some of you, but I want you to know that whether they are new or whether you heard them before, tonight what we want to do, we want to make the commitment tonight. Tonight, we're going to make the commitment not to remember the former things that we always had. In other words, the way we always pray. Maybe we didn't do it the right way. Now you get the correct information. Now you say, I know now the true prayer is not about me getting on my knees and, and, and rolling in the dirt and trying to, to, to do the fast and prayer. While fast and prayer is good, that is not the true prayer. The true prayer is for you to be focused on what it is you want and be precise in claiming it, and when you get it, once you claim it, then you have to believe that you have it. How do you believe it? By experiencing, I said, having the experience, I said that prayer has already been answered. Once that happened, you will receive it. And so we here tonight to tell you, it's time for us to embrace the new uh, concept of prayer, the new concept. If we want our life to change, we must let go the former thing. That's what Paul said. The one thing that I do in Philippians 3, he said, the one thing I do is forgetting that which putting behind me what is behind me, forgetting the past and moving on to the future and 
running for the gold medal. That's what I do. So whatever it is that has happened to you in the past, however you have had a relationship with God, whichever way you have gone, God is saying, this is a new beginning. In Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah for chapter 43, verses 18, verse 18 and 19. Listen to what it says. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Now it shall spring forth, God said. He is promised to do a new thing. Wherever the old ways was, whether it did work, it didn't work, we need to forego of this old way and embrace the new way and uh, uh, accept ourselves. Because when we were created, we were created, as I told you all week long, and I'm pressing this, we were created to be like God. That is why Psalm 8, our uh, test said, David said, when I look into the heavens and see the beauty of heaven, what is man that are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him. Then he answered the question himself because God inspired him. He said, for you have made man a little lower than Elohim. And Elohim is the word, the word Elohim means God. Man was made a little lower than God, not angel, but God. When you check out the, the, the original text, it said, for you have made man a little lower than God. That is the power with which God made us. Because later on, the same psalm, it said, uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me just uh, 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 tell you something about science right here, in just science, because all of the, within us, we are the, the condensed concentration of everything God has created. Okay, let me make, let me, let me say that again. In other words, the stuff that God used to create the universe, the stuff that he used, the atom, the subatomic particles, all of the things that God made to create, used to create the universe, he condensed it into a lump of clay called clay for money. So, so, so within me, there are more atoms in my body than there are stars in the universe. There are more atoms in my body than there are stars in the entire universe. So God created it that way. That is the reason some uh, quantum scientists, something baffled them. They were studying this and they took some of the quantum properties and they tried to observe it in the, uh, tennis, in the microscope. When they look at it, Every time they look in the, in the uh, microscope, where they see what the first person saw is totally different. And when the second person comes to observe it, what he observed is different from what the first person observed. Why? Because the, 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 act, the particle take the shape of the thought of the person of the observer. The observer look at it just from your thought. Your thought changes the, the, change the shape of the, sub, the, the, the particle that you are looking at. So when I come there, my thought is different. Your thought is different. That is proof positive from the science that we, our thought, affect the very thing that God has created the universe with. Why? Because this lump of clay is the condensed, the, 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 the compact of everything that is in the universe. That is why we can connect with it. So when God said that I have put all creation under you, he really was saying creation has been placed under you. That means you have the power that God to have that. Now, this is what mankind, since sin entered into the world, have been struggling with because of 4,000 years of being lied to, being in the cage that we talk about this year, this week, that cage while we were there, we developed all kinds of behavior that is ungodly. And those behaviors, some of them uh, is about fear, it's about uh, all of the things that God never gave to us. He said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God never made us to be fearful. But when we came from the cave, we thought that we were limited. God created us to be limitless, not limited. But we have always look down upon ourselves. We, our, our perception of who we are is so skewed. So Jesus came to make it known. All the prophets put together who came before Jesus, they could not do the job properly to let us know that God is now way over there and we are way over here, but rather that God is one with us. 
And Jesus came as a man. So when Jesus came as a man, he always referred to himself as a son of man. You, if you notice, he always called himself the son of man. Why did Jesus do that? He called himself the son of man so that we would know that like us, he is a son of man. And then like him, we are the son of the children of God. So God, Jesus called himself son of man to identify with us so that we can call ourselves uh, children of God to identify with him. So as Jesus were both man and God, human and God, Jesus said the same to us. Now, you think I'm kidding. Now, very quick, our last test. Our last test, you remember the situation where Jesus uh, Jesus is, is uh, going preaching and calling himself the son of God. And, uh, and he finished preaching, they went home, Wherever they retreat to the disciples, he only with his disciples. And then he asked the disciples, he said to the disciples, really, what do people out there say that the son of man is? Who do people say is the son of man? And then they all got up, they say, oh, they say that you are Elijah, you are this, you are that. Jesus said, okay, that's what they say. You've been with me now for three and uh, uh, three plus years, going to three and a half years now. What do you say? Who do you say the son of man is? And then Peter jumped and Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus is excited at this point. And Jesus said to Peter, he said, you have spoken the truth. And on this truth, I will build my church. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what new revelation did Peter come up with this time? Because as I read my Bible, on the day Jesus was baptized, on that day, the voice came from heaven, and heaven opened the door, descended, and a voice came, and there were witnesses at his baptism who heard the voice, and the voice declared Jesus to be the Son of God. So the idea that Jesus is the Son of God is not something new, because that's something that had already been articulated from heaven. And then Jesus himself, all through his three years of ministry, he always referred to himself as the son of God, the son of man to identify with us, the son of God to identify with God. He always called himself son of man and also son of God so that we can do the same. So this whole concept of Jesus being the son of God was not a new thing. It was not strange. So uh, uh, when I read the text, I said, wait a minute. Why is Jesus so excited here and saying, wow, now you have said the truth, flesh and blood have not revealed it to you, but my father wishes in heaven. But then as I done, furthermore, I did my uh, thorough study, I found out something that blew my mind. I said, oh, this is why Jesus is so excited. Because when Jesus asked the question, he said, who do people say the son of man is? And Peter, Peter answered it, thou art the Christ. Now the word Christ is not really a proper name. The word Christ means you are the anointed one, the anointed one. So, so Peter said, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, that's it. What is it, Lord? That's what I've come to tell you. That's what I came to show you. All this time being with you, that's what I wanted you to understand. That is that just as I am the anointed of God, so are you. As I am the son of God, so are you. So there is nothing that I am doing in your uh, sight that you can see that you will not be able to do. Even Ellen White confirmed that. She said, there is nothing that Christ did that we are not able to do if we believe as he did. So Jesus was confirming. He said the truth that Peter told, the truth is not just that Jesus, the human being, uh, is the son of God. No, it's that Jesus, Jesus said the truth that you have just revealed applies to you. Because as I am, John 4, uh, John 4, uh, 1 John 4, I uh, believe first John 4, 17. As I am, so as, as he is, so are we in the world. So Jesus is excited here. The truth that Jesus said no gate will prevail against it is the fact that you and I are one with him. 
that wherever he's entitled to, we are entitled to it too. Hallelujah. That is why I can come boldly before the throne of grace and perceive what it is I want in my life and call it into my life and get excited about it because I know that God has given me the power and not only the power, but he has given me everything as it pertains to life and godliness. What it means that God has given me everything that will make life worthwhile for me and everything that will make me to behave like God, my Lord. And that's the God that we serve. So, so I come to you tonight, whatever it is, the prophet said, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Well, if you accept this new way of thinking and the new way of, of going to the Lord, knowing who you really are now, because all the other things that you have known about yourself was a force that, were, came, that came from the pit of hell itself. Now God is saying, now that you know the truth, you need to forego or let go of the former things that you always thought was a real thing and embrace a new one. Because once you do it, God is going to bless you because that's who you are. You were made, you are a magnet. You are a, the larger, watch this now. You are the, the most powerful transmission, transmitter on, on planet earth. You see, you and myself can see each other. We can hear each other. Here, if we reviewed ourselves, because there is a transmitter, electro electronic transmitter. We are the highest transmitter on earth because we magnetize wherever that God has placed before or with our, on our feet. When we want it, we bring it into existence. Five to 10 years ago, we couldn't worship this way, but God made it possible. Why? It came through the man. God didn't do this uh, by himself. Once you trust him, I said it, once you focus on the end goal, God will take care of the cause to get you to the end goal. So tonight, my friends, God, Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and focusing on what is ahead. Isaiah said, remember you not the former thing, neither consider the things of old. Then in verse 19, he said, behold, I will do a new thing. If you just let go your old way of thinking, thinking about yourself, if you let go all of that and, and, and embrace what you have been hearing all night, because that's who you really are. You are like Jesus. I cannot stress that enough. You are more like Christ. And so once you start seeing yourself, when you get up in the morning, you look, or after you go, you go look in the mirror, you see, if you see yourself, you say, oh, I'm looking at Jesus. <laughs> because you see, once you start thinking that way, it changes the way you do things, it changes the way you talk. And Jesus showed that when Philip said, uh, Philip said to, was it Philip? Uh, one of them said, uh, show us the father. And Jesus said, wait a minute, Philip, Philip. Say, what I mean, have I been with you all this year, this time, and you still do not know me? Don't you know the Father and I are one? So if you, if Jesus and the Father be one, make Jesus to be the Father, and then we and Jesus are one, that means whenever you look yourself in the mirror, you should be seeing Jesus. If you're not seeing Jesus, that means something is wrong. You need to get, check your gospel and check yourself because then something is not right with you. Remember you not the former things, not to consider the things of old. Are you ready? Are you ready to embrace God's new blessing that will take you to new heights? I hope you are. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you, dear Lord, for all your wonderful blessings that you have been pouring upon us all through this week. Thank you for this conclusion. I may not be able to see my brothers and sisters. Most of them have seen my face. I have not been able to see all of their faces, but Lord, one of these days we will meet. If we don't meet here on the earth again, one day we will meet all standing on the seat of glass and conversing and talking about this time that we spent together. Bless us, O oh Lord, to forget the former and embrace the new thing. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>